Mobile device management is the process of controlling and managing your mobile devices for your organization. So it refers to both the process of controlling those mobile devices and the software, mobile device management software that's used, installed on each devices, uh, each of those devices to make sure that you're enforcing security policies, you're providing updates, uh, you can do geofencing, geolocation using mobile device management software. So it's basically a little client that sits on your phone and ensures that security policies are being enforced. Maybe it will apply disk encryption to the entirety of the mobile device disk or maybe just a portion. It will also track the device in case it's lost or stolen. It can perform remote wipe. And an organization might want to install mobile device management software on their mobile devices that they provide to their employees or any device that an employee is using to access the corporate network. It can be very important from a security standpoint because accessing your network can introduce external security flaws. If there's malware infecting your mobile device and there's plenty of malware out there that infects mobile devices, that could have a, that could bleed onto your network. It's also a point of ingress and egress of data. So if employees are accessing your, your corporate network using their mobile devices, they have the opportunity to then maybe download data they shouldn't or email data outside the organization. So mobile device management software can also have a, um, a data loss protection or DLP component to it as well. Now there's different deployment models when we talk about mobile device management and these describe how an organization is going to want to control its mobile device management program. Is the organization going to provide devices to the employees? Are the employees expected to bring their own devices? Or is it allowed for the employees to check social media or use it for personal use? So each one of these deployment models has a different name. The first one is gonna be corporate owned. And usually this is referred to also as corporate owned business only or COBO. This is the most traditional uh, sense of mobile device management. This is where the corporation owns everything. The corporation owns the mobile phone, distributes the mobile phone to its employees, and only authorize that mobile device or mobile phone uh, to be used for business only. So it's basically just a business only phone. The organization is going to control all the settings, all the firmware. It's going to be able to push security policy updates, and it can ensure that communication to and from the mobile device is encrypted and secured, and the device has uh, security settings on it that the organization wants to enforce. So it's the easiest and it's the least um, intensive method, I think, for a corporation to go through. And it also has the most security. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is corporate owned personally enabled. And this introduces a little more risk, but adds some benefits for the employees. The risk here with personally enabled, as the name suggests, is that it allows for employees to use the device for personal use. They can check social media, they can access websites outside of the organization. Uh, they might be able to use it for their own purchases. They can use their Apple or uh, Google Pay wallet and whatever they want. They can install you know, Candy Crush, whatever they want on the, the mobile device. That's going to be corporate owned, personally enabled. Now, the mobile device management software can restrict certain applications, maybe third party applications. So there are some security settings, but it's still a corporate owned device. It's owned by the corporation. The corporation is just being generous and allowing the employees to use that mobile device for personal use. This is not as common as you'll see Kobo. It adds more benefits to the employees and introduces more risk to the organization. So it costs more for the organization because not only are they providing the device, but they have to account for, ex for additional risks associated with having that device being personally enabled and the user using that uh, device for personal use, uh, accessing personal email accounts can introduce additional opportunities for loss of data or data exfiltration accessing external websites might introduce the possibility for malware to infect the network. So there's a lot of risks involved. We also see choose your own device. And with choose your own device, the, uh, the company is providing a list of devices. Basically, they're providing several different types of device, usually like an Android option and an Apple option, for example, 
and they might have a couple different devices, different sizes, different generations, different functionality. This could be in either a Kobo or a um, corporate owned, personally enabled a COPE in deployment. So choose your own device can be either one of those. And basically you're just providing a list of, or a list of devices or a series of devices say, hey, which device would you prefer? So it can be used for either Kobo or COPE and it provides another benefit to the organization without adding too much of a security burden. This could be very useful for an organization you know, who's, maybe you have uh, executives from the marketing department who are used to working with Apple devices and they wanna use Apple devices to communicate or you maybe have a certain team that likes the Apple chat and how that works, uh, uh, Apple group chats feature. Or maybe you have some developers who want to use Android devices for certain reasons. Maybe they're more comfortable with that. I mean, you're, the, it, you can see if you start to imagine the different benefits you can have for your employees. It doesn't add too much risk than a Kobo deployment because the organization is still controlling the device, issuing the device and controlling what goes on that device. All that matters is that the organization has to adapt to a couple different types of devices. So there's not too much added um, risk involved because the corporation is still controlling the device, but it does add some a choice for the employees. So it is a nice benefit for the employees. I think choose your own device is a great method of, um, of providing some sort of compromise between security and functionality for the users. Now, of course, um, we also have the most risky deployment model, which is bring your own device or BYOD. Now this introduces a lot of risks and organizations may think that they're saving money by deploying a bring your own device policy because they won't have to pay for the mobile devices and the carrier fees. But at the same time, you're introducing anything that's on the mobile device that your employees are bringing into their network. Um, you, you have to account for older devices, devices with firmware that's maybe outdated. Um, in this instance, mobile device management software is incredibly important to help prevent against uh, jailbreaking or root kitting of the mobile devices. Jailbreaking is referring to uh, Apple devices, which is where you change the operating system in a way that you have full root control, essentially. And then root kitting would be for an Android device where you have full control over the device, you can install your firmware, whatever um, applications you want. So jailbreaking for Apple devices, root kitting for Android devices. And mobile device management software can help detect if that's occurred and then restrict access to the employee or the company network if that happens. Mobile device management software, when a, in a bring your own device policy, can be a little invasive to an employee's um, privacy. It can monitor information that goes to and from the device. It can choose to create a secure memory segment that is encrypted specifically for corporate information. It could also have that DLP functionality, geolocation features, and remote wipe. I, I knew a guy at a company I used to work for when I was a government contractor. He, We were in a company that had a bring your own device policy. And if you chose to link your device to the corporate network, you you had to install this mobile device management software. He ended up losing his phone. He went on a camping trip, he lost his phone. He didn't know where it was, so he, he thought, okay, I better call the company right away. You know, it's in the mobile device management policy that I had to sign or BYOD policy. Um, sometimes it's also referred to as that. So in the policy, it said, if you lose your phone or it's stolen, you have to notify the company within 24 hours. So he came back from the camping trip. He couldn't find his phone anywhere. He called the company, he told them, hey, you know, I, I don't know where my phone is. I'm, I'm still trying to find it. And uh, they went ahead and did a remote wipe <laughs> and they completely wiped his phone. So uh, it took off all, I mean, this is everything on the phone, his pictures, you know, his personal files, all his preferences, gone. <laughs> a few hours later, he checked deep in the seat cushions of his Jeep and he found his phone and his phone had no data on it. So he wasn't too happy, <laughs> but it was in the policy and, uh, you know, he 
went back and forth. He eventually left the company. I don't think he, he enjoyed that experience. And that's one of the risks to the employees. If you have to, if you have that bring your own device policy, because you're, you're, uh, you're inviting some invasion of your privacy and restricting some of your personal freedoms by linking your mobile device to that corporate network and having them installing that mobile device management software onto your, your device. So from an employee standpoint, this can be, it can be seen as a convenience by some employees, but some employees can see that, you know, there is some risk that they have to assume as opposed to the company. The company's kind of transferring that risk a little bit to the employees. You know, they don't have to, the company doesn't have to issue the devices or uh, worry about if, you know, the device is lost, if any repercussions from wiping that device. It's, it, it seems like a easier solution, but in the long term, there's usually a lot more work done with a bring your own device policy than if you pick from a business standpoint, than if you pick a Kobo or a Cope deployment. So a lot, very risky with bring your own device uh, and the least corporate control. But yeah, those are the mobile device management deployment models and different devices. Usually more mature organizations will opt towards the Kobo or the cope or the choose your own device policy. And usually younger organizations, less mature organizations will start with a bring your own device uh, policy. There are a lot of risks involved with that, as I said.